James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Greetings, this is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts and Progressive Discussions, um, and co hosts of Progressive Discussions, of course, with the uh, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And uh, what you're looking at now is something I consider very serious. Um, it's proof that, I, and I knew it was just a matter of time before the uh, right-wing evangelical uh, zealot religious freaks of the Republican Party would start to destroy our First Amendment right and our, our freedoms. The fascist stormtroopers, the fascist oligarch of the right wing. Now here you have um, a company called Backpage.com, which is similar to Craigslist. Okay. Craigslist, I believe, was forced to eliminate their adult section. Now here you can see if you scrutinize it closely and you can hit the pause button too. Um, on back page the entire adult section is censored. This just happened recently. Okay. This past week it is censored. The government has censored the entire adult section of Backpage.com. This is all part of these religious, fanatic, cultist freaks of the right wing. Uh, that um, not only have a war against the poor, they have hang-ups about sexuality. Okay. And, and they try to control... A woman's body, of course, a woman's vagina, a woman's body. In my opinion, a, a woman or a man has a right to do whatever they want with their body. It's their body. And people have a right also to pornography. Okay. So, this is, this is just the beginning. This is very serious because censorship is bad. Censor, censorship uh, can target anybody and it can get worse and worse and it will get worse. You know, it's like a corporation that starts to downsize. They get one sucker, one employee to do the job of three people. And then before you know it, they lay off more. And then one employee does the job of four people, five people until the person works to death. Well, this could only get worse. Censorship is a bad thing. It's fascism. These religious nuts are part of a cult of the right wing. They know nothing about the Bible. And uh, I guess it's about power, really, because they're already multi-millionaires and multi-billionaires. But, you know, you have a right to pornography. You have a right to sexuality. You have a right to do what you want in the privacy of your own home um, and with your bodies. But that's it. Free advertising on Backpage.com has followed the same path as Craigslist.com with no adult section, not even massages, not even massages, body rubs, even that censored. Heaven forbids, heaven forbid somebody should get a therapeutic massage followed by a happy ending. Oh, gee, that's the end of the world, isn't it? Meanwhile, the right-wing politicians are so corrupt that they, when they die, they need to be screwed into their graves. I mean, according to the Bible, there is no such thing as a, a, a tiny sin, a small sin, a medium-sized sin, 
and a big sin. Sin is sin. So, they're in no position to throw stones in a glass house. But they do. All right. Now we will continue at the beginning of our show for this week's Progressive Discussions. Okay. We're here. Another week has flown by. And I mean flown by. Yeah. Welcome to um, Progressive Discussions. Okay. Um, you have just seen, of course, with myself narrating it, the a video clip of evidence that the uh, right-wing evangelical zealot uh, uh, cultist religious freaks have started with their uh, agenda of censorship. First they did it with, uh, you're familiar with Craigslist and Backpage, they, they're, they're, they offer free classified ads. They started with Craigslist way back when by uh, censoring their entire adult section and now they have done it with Backpage.com they censored the entire adult section. The entire adult section, which includes, believe it or not, body rubs, massage. So hey, hey. if you're a massage, even if you're a legitimate massage therapist, you cannot advertise under massage because they have put that in the adult section. With all the, the evil, and and serious corruption deep corruption going on with uh, American politicians in Washington and and our crony capitalist system with all this corruption going on heaven forbid a person who gets a full body massage <laughs> should also get a happy ending oh gee he heaven forbid but happy ending yeah, a hand job. Ah! Now, this is only the beginning because censorship is like a, like a snowball going down a mountain, domino effect. They start off with, you know, it's like companies downsizing. First one employee is now doing the work of two and then they download, uh, download downsize again He's doing, the sucker's doing the work of three and four and five. When does it end? And they're going to come after other things. Every so, time the you Republicans know, get the power, that's what they do. They have, Censorship. number one. Go back to Reagan and Mies. This whole thing, yeah, the Mies uh, 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 Commission Against Pornography. Now, their excuse, according to Backpage.com, is they want to prevent child prostitution. Now, isn't it funny that they pick that as an excuse to ban and censor the entire adult section? There are many people that are over the age of 18. I would say probably in the in the 90s per 90 percentiles that are adults, consenting adults. They just want to pick some reason out of a hat. Yeah, whatever the sensitive thing is at the moment. Right. The sensitive issue now is with, is the pedophile, uh, underground pedophile um, uh, uh, human trafficking. So they'll take that because it's popular. And evidently they're using that as an excuse to ban everything involved in the adult industry. Um, and that's that, you know. I mean... As far as I'm concerned, adult human beings, men and women, have a right to do whatever they want with their body, and people have a right to pornography. So I guess it's uh, it's war against the poor, which goes back to ancient times. Mm -hmm. It's war against sexuality, which is kind of a Protestant, uh, puritanical 
stupid way of thinking. Uh, uh, maybe, even, maybe even back to the right-wing Catholic Church. Um, a war against sexuality, war against the poor, I already said that, and, um, and uh, of course, a war against homosexuality. Um, and uh, there, was, there was one more thing that they, the right wing are against. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, they're against a, 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 an open mind, the ability of free thinking. Oh yeah, they're against, a, they're what really against a good public education. Not true. For the masses. They want to privatize education yeah. because they want to dumb down the masses. There you go. So, for the kings and the queens. Right. So they're all, they, these are all like hallmarks of fascism, aren't they? A lot. Don't educate the public. Uh, uh, burn the books. Uh. Well, when you take it down to its nth degree, it's, it's usually associated with uh, religion. Whatever the religion is. Okay. Yeah, made up a made up religion. In America, it's you know. Yeah, it's not based on what's in the Bible. It is uh, a, a lot. Much of the history of the Catholic Church is not based on what's inside the Bible either. But I'm saying it's a cult. It's uh, you know, it's unproven. Uh, they, no, they can't prove that tradition. they're tradition. Tradition. Each one has their own tradition. Male man. Traditions of man. They all have their own traditions. The Mormons have theirs, so on and so forth. Um, the um, they can't prove their God exists. There's no facts involved. There's no science involved. So what does Donald Trump do? He appoints people that are raving, uh, uh, evangelical zealot lunatics like Vice President uh, Pence and Jeff Sessions, who claims that the separation of church and state is unconstitutional, which is a lie. So why even have a constitution? If the constitution is unconstitutional, then why have a constitution? You know, they, they use, they make up the rules that suits their agenda. And their agenda is greed, is money, and the power to control the population. Wow. So, I mean, uh, and now we have the sellout Democrats, and one of them is Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey, that uh, f voted against Bernie Sanders' plan of providing affordable prescription drugs for the poor in America. Uh, involving Canada, I believe, and uh, they don't want, not only did they uh, gut out the, uh, um, the uh, uh, previous pre-illness uh, stipulation, what do they call it, uh, uh, pre-existing conditions, conditions. They, they just started to gut out Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, pre-existing conditions, which well, means... said he was going to leave that and the, uh, the uh, not, uh, not giving uh, coverage for like having a pre-existing condition, keeping your children on your policy for till they turn 26, and uh, something else we're doing at the moment is left. Till they turn 26. So, so somebody... God forbid, has uh, a diagnosis of cancer, and and they need to right. they need to choose a they, new health insurance policy that's connected to their uh, Medicaid and or Medicare. Yeah. They, they the won't be uh, no. discriminated against. Right. In this case, the Republicans want these people to be discriminated against. Oh yeah, because the safety insurance company money. That's catastrophic care. Profit. Yeah. yeah, it's all about it's profit over people and the planet, and uh, I don't know how Donald Trump's going to keep all his campaign promises because his cabinet—they're all—they're all monsters. One is worse than the other. 
unless you're you're a stingy, greedy, rich person, then they're all angels to you. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is what we have it, and you know, and and in a way, there's, see, there's there's a a, a, a a there's a little bit of a silver lining to the cloud in 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 the fact that the the uh, Democratic Party today has been really exposed for what it is when all those Democratic senators voted against affordable prescription drugs for the poor. Now that shows you who they really represent and who they work for. So this is even more reason to start a new third progressive party and uh, but it has to be high volume you have to have all the progressive heavy hitters in the spotlight come together uh, you have to have the uh, legions of uh, b former or current Bernie Kratz you have to have mass amounts of high volume warm bodies in order for the media to take notice and give a third progressive party any face time at all you can't have you can't have like what Jill Stein has with the Green Party whatever she's doing you know uh, uh, and expect the TV to, to uh, somebody to interview her on mainstream media it's not gonna happen because she doesn't have the, 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 the volume of humans humanoids but but if if progressives got together now like Bernie Sanders and uh, what the hell's his name Jeff is manager Jeff Weaver everybody connected to the progressive movement either the underground media like uh, uh, democracy now uh, what's her name Amy Amy Goodman hmm. all of them all of them uh, sank of the young Turks um, Ralph Nader Jill Stein that guy Baraka uh, you know, everybody who is non-establishment must come together. Otherwise, no one will know that this party exists. And uh, being that most American imbeciles uh, watch mainstream television only and mainstream news because they just don't have the uh, brain cells to seek out the real hard-hitting truth like we do hmm. um, it's just gonna be like um, gonna be hidden it's like having a restaurant in a bad location where nobody could see it so it's really it's really uh, uh, furious uh, I mean in, uh, infuriating that that many Democrats voted against it and uh, bad days are coming it is the Democrats have literally become the opposite side of the same right-wing coin corporatist coin and uh, I have no I have no idea why US troops are heading for the Russian border in Poland right now they're in for a rude awakening if they think Russia and or China is like uh, waging war in the Middle East <laughs> they're in for a very rude awakening because you, you're talking about superpowers man with a lot of people and technology even China alone you think China's a pushover they got they've been having a, a, a successful space program and the US media never mentions it they know more than Americans think believe me they're, they're not just reverse engineering they have they have capabilities to do a lot of serious damage so I think they shot down one of our satellites they have they have more they're they're trying to um, yeah destroy the GPS satellite so like because we depend on them so much uh, during war 
war games and stuff like that. We we yeah. depend too much on. Didn't Ronald Reagan call satellite. that Star Wars? No, that Star Wars was to shoot down missiles coming at us. Oh. Well, we have satellites. Yeah. Mr. Reagan believed that when you shoot off a missile, you can recall it. Hey boy, hey boy, come back, come That's back, right. come on. Yeah, come on back and get in your silo. <laughs> Dinner time. Oh I forgot to ring the lucky number seven bells for the show. Mm. Uh, this is, this is actually the pre-inaugural I don't know if I called last week's show the pre-inaugural, but it's not the twentieth yet. No. This is this is the real pre-inaugural progressive discussion show where Barack Obama says bye bye. I don't know if he's going to retire and uh, if he's going to live in Hawaii. Hawaii. Not yet. Uh, he. I. I would pick. Hawaii over the Chicago area because they have brutal winters near Chicago, and I would uh, there would be the and they got brutal people who keep shooting each other. Hawaii's paradise, man, compared okay. to Illinois, to Chicago, uh -huh. is a uh, he's smart. He have well, a he's got to stay in Washington with his daughter in college, the elder. She's in. She's in college. So yeah. maybe maybe he'll stay in in the Washington area. They did buy a house. Oh, yeah. Well, I know Hillary Clinton had a place in Washington when she was senator. I don't know if she still has it, but um, yeah, you gotta. I guess if the man wants to stay relevant, and uh, his wife has future political aspirations, Michelle, they can't go hide out and on the island of Maui or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they gotta. They gotta stay near a major city, mm. you know. So, um, mm. all I know is a lot of neoliberals that were Hillary supporters are all ecstatic about uh, encouraging Michelle Obama to run for president in 2020. But uh, don't forget now, in four years, Bernie Sanders is not going to be senile, not yet. Mm, and Too and. Old. And there's no way he'll be the oldest that ever ran. Yeah, but I have a feeling he's going to yeah. be still sharp as a tack because he's sharp as a tack now. But, but, I'm not voting for a person running as a Democrat. Never again. After what happened with the DNC and Wasserman Schultz, and 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 and, and they're not they're not um, they're not giving uh, uh, Ellison 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 the job. A progressive to run it. I'm done. For San and Ungrata, two parties. I'm not voting for either 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 side. Anyway. Anywho. Uh, any the floor is yours. This weather we're having is insane. Mm. It gets mild, sixty degrees. Then it's freezing. Sixty, sixty seven. Then it's freezing again. It goes down to the below twenty, twenty, whatever. Mm. Then it's mild again, and no wonder people are getting sick around here. Well, let's get rid of January and February. All right. I just want to plug. I just want no pun intended, folks. Plug. Plug the leak. <laughs> a, uh, a a a chain up and down up and down the entire east coast of dollar stores. A little consumer tip. They got a big shipment of LED lights. Hey. This is a 60 watt. This is a nine. It uses nine watts of electricity, and it puts out 60 watts of of light. Uh -huh. And it says the lumens is 800. That's so good. And lasts up to. 22.8 right. years or 20 wow. or 25,000 hours whichever comes first uh -huh. all right so you got you got nine 120 volts 
medium base, 9 watts of electricity delivering eight, 800 lumens. And I, and I got it for a buck. I got one for me. I may go back, <laughs> maybe get half a dozen of them Ooh. because they're a buck each. I'm telling you, the wheels are turning with the consumer advocates from progressive discussions. LED's the way to go, brother. LED's the way to go. I want to also announce that uh, you will be seeing our uh, our um, number one administrator on our Facebook group, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. The sensible sage, Sash Boyle, is back again when we have our break for lunch. He will, he will be giving his monologue. And uh, we have a new Google community on Google. It's like it's like a web page, it's like a Facebook page, but it's on Google. It's called Progressive Discussions. Also, we have a Progressive Discussions Facebook page that you should go and join. Uh, you know, click like to it, and then we have a, a new Google community named Progressive Discussions. And uh, of course, a shout out to Saj Boyle and. Um, Let's see. Uh, hold on. And uh, that's about it, really. Okay, go ahead. Donald Trump took questions from the media on Wednesday for the first time since he was elected president on November 8th. And he quickly put to rest the idea that he is rapidly approaching presidency would fundamentally change his tone, style, or basic approach to issues and the media. Donald Trump will be Donald Trump. He's not going to change. That's what he's saying. Trump, through a lawyer, said he would not put his assets in a blind trust, uh, the traditional way in which presidents wall off their private interests, like uh, uh, from Elizabeth, their public obligation, like Elizabeth uh, Warren mentioned the, the words "blind trust" when she was speaking to Doctor Ben uh, Carson. Carson, right? yeah, he's going to fix up HUD, ain't he? You notice how she was needling him, trying to get, trying to trying to clarify what he really wants to do. Yeah, well, yeah, because. Yeah, 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 you know, back in uh, Reagan's day, uh, Jack Kemp, they put him in charge of HUD. And uh, Kemp was, you know, he was supposed to be for poor people, blah, 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 blah. Jack Kemp, the guy with the real big full, full head of hair, yeah. He was a, a, a football player or something. But he was a Republican. Yeah. Trump was also quick to note that as president, it is impossible for him to, legally speaking, have a conflict of interest. And, therefore, any steps he takes to separate his business interests from his presidency were above and beyond the call of duty. This was a similar line of logic used by Trump's lawyer to explain how he would deal with the emoluments clause. Trump refused to offer a timetable for the release of his tax return. Oh, he still hasn't done that. No. He insisted that the only people who care about his tax returns are reporters. Not true. He's dodging it. As evidence that no one cares about his tax returns, Trump offered this. I won! Well, we all know he did, he was far from paying his fair share in income taxes, <laughs> but so is every American corporation. You know what's funny? Donald Trump put in charge of the, uh, you know, um, the, the federal um, department in charge of uh, Native American affairs. 
the guy who was running the Dakota pipeline, ah. it, 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 you know, representing the oil company. Now talk about the fox guarding the hen house. It's oh. all throughout the cabinet. That's why I said monsters, a cabinet of monsters. This is like a, a horror movie come true. Exactly. Given the evidence to condemn Russian President Vladimir Putin, Trump did not. Instead, he said it was an asset that Putin allegedly likes him. Well, um, you know, he likes his style, he likes his outspokenness, you know, and uh, Putin's like that. When asked directly about the Russian hacking of the election, uh, Trump acknowledged it was probably Russia, which is further than he has gone before. Well, of course he, he's not upset about that because he won the election. But quickly pivoted to emphasize that Putin wouldn't be doing these sorts of things under a Trump administration. Well, uh, you, can, you can go further and say the same thing about Anonymous and WikiLeaks because of uh, the nature of, of uh, the Clinton dynasty. That's what, uh, and the DNC rigging the election, that's what encouraged them to hack and expose. Remember, WikiLeaks did not write those emails. Same thing with Edward Snowden when he discovered uh, the, uh, the, the dirt back then. The NSA, the dirt. Trump began his news conference with somewhat surprising words of praise for the media and their discernment in not publishing allegations in a Russian dossier. Now he's praising the media? Before he was cursing out the media. BuzzFeed did publish the full dossier, even though the allegations are unsubstantiated and have not been corroborated by any major news organization to date. But by the end of the news conference, Trump was back to his old media-hating self. He shouted down CNN's Jim Acosta. Yeah, I know. Who repeatedly tried to ask him a question. Eventually telling Acosta that he was fake news. Yeah, he didn't want to talk to him, but then he, he, he took a question from the uh, Breitbart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breitbart. Right fart. Right, right, fart fart. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's like the he's like the weather, man. You know, he's all over the place. Um, you know, he's. I heard he. I heard he. He's on Twitter arguing with people at 6:30 a.m. Uh, I have my first dream probably at 6:30 a.m. Those four examples, and those were only the four that immediately sprang to mind make very clear that Trump has absolutely no plan to pivot when he assumes the presidency. He is who he is. There is no Trump but Trump. And I don't think the Republican, the Republican uh, replacement for anything Obama Created, I don't think there is a replacement for anything. You know what I mean? Like their their game plan. That there's no real. I don't think they really have any anything like the Affordable Care Act or and. Uh, um, well, they don't at the moment. Uh, uh, the economy stimulation of the economy and uh, hey, they have nothing. To you're still, if you're gonna cut, if you're gonna cut even more taxes from the rich and corporations. And since the jobs are not going to be in the United States, most likely, what are you going to stimulate? What are you going to stimulate? 
uh, maybe maybe the job market for third world uh, country uh, citizens. But that's it. Of course. I've long believed that talk of a pivot or an unveiling of a more presidential Trump, which has been a non-stop subject since it became clear Trump would be the Republican presidential nominee, is an absolute misjudgment, not only of Trump, but of what his many victories over the past 18 months have taught him. Ask yourself, how many 70-year-old men fundamentally change their personality? Oh, uh, none, none that I know of. And you know what? I didn't know he was that old. How about 70-year-old men who have been extremely successful? Well, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Is there a number less than zero? Hey, if you learn from a from a father who was a slumlord, uh, I'm sure he learned a lot about underhandedness in acquiring money. That was true even before Trump started to win primaries and caucuses. What his primary win taught him was that he was right, and the Republican brain trust was wrong. What his general election victory taught him was that he was right, and that everyone in the political class, elected officials, consultants, the media, was wrong. Why the hell would Trump change his approach to politics and policy after the year he has had? The answer is he would not. For Trump, the ends justify the means. In winning, he showed that everything from tax returns to blind trusts to cordial relations with the media were immaterial to regular people. How can it be bad, wrong, if I won? Is the Trump thought. His news conference on Wednesday proved that basic belief won't be changing when the president-elect becomes the president in One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. Yeah, from what I understand, um, Bernie Sanders is giving a, a big speech <clears throat> at an event uh, tomorrow around 1 p.m. Sunday. Um, what's tomorrow, the 15th? 14th. Tomorrow's the 14th? Yeah. January 14, 2017. This is a big uh, event. Uh, concerning it's a it's a huge protest against what the Republican Congress has been doing and uh, oh by the way when we break for lunch I will you will also see a list of the names of all the Democratic um, senators that voted against affordable prescription drugs for low-income people their names are there so hit the pause button and see if your senators are part of that list. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> What's up, Doc? Donald Trump plans to relinquish management of his businesses, but he still intends to retain an ownership stake in his sprawling real estate and branding empire. Conflicts of interest. Trump's adult sons, Donald, Jr., and Eric, will run the company, <sighs> along with a Trump Organization executive. Donald Trump will not make any corporate decisions 
during his time in the White House. No, he'll just whisper into his son's ears. Hey, you, you notice uh, Elizabeth Warren was t asking Dr. Ben Carson if any of the HUD money would go to Trump, Donald Trump oh. and his real estate endeavors. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, I, the first time I, I, I'm proud of her when he when she questioned uh, Ben Casey. I mean uh, Carson, Ben Carson. What did Carson say? Uh, 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 yeah, because it probably will. I'm a hominer, 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 hominer. That's what it's all about. Uh, you know? uh, 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 he just kept on going on and on, and on about the the, uh, the uh, non uh, uh, the unbiased, uh, uh, no partiality, uh, uh, honest the way he will run uh, yeah. uh, ur the urban uh, HUD. Well, that's what they said about Jack Kemp too. You know. And it didn't occur. No oh boy, I I just see, and, and you know what? There was another. There's an investigation going. I don't know who's doing these investigations, but there's an investigation that just started concerning uh, serious GOP corruption, which none of it surprises me. <laughs> none of it. Um, hey, by the way, how did how the hell? Did a ugly, funny-looking, turtle-faced guy like Bitch McConnell from a from a stupid redneck state like Kentucky end up being the a majority uh, Senate majority leader? How how did a how did a character like that that talks like he has marbles in his mouth? It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible that he that he got reelected. That's incredible, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Man, they must be real dumb motherfuckers in Kentucky to keep on reelecting the turtle head. Well, yeah, they are. They're on uh, Obamacare. They're on everything. And and Medicaid and 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 food stamps. But they vote Republican. And they vote Republican. Exactly. I know somebody personally who's like that, you know. Trump will put his business assets into a trust, <laughs> and an ethics advisor will join the company's management team. The advisor, who has not yet been named, will review and sign off on any new business deals that raise potential conflicts of interest. Hey, maybe he'll put, he, maybe he meant he'll put it in a trust, you know, like the support the garment. <laughs> he'll put it in a trust. I told you I was going to put it in a trust. <laughs> uh, Dylan said, that's uh, Trump's lawyer. J.J. Dillon, right. Sherry Dillon. Sherry Dillon. Oh, that, he's a wrestling manager. The four said horsemen. Uh, the Trump organization will not complete any new foreign deals, but will continue to pursue new domestic business during Trump's presidency. Dylan said Trump's daughter and trusted advisor Ivanka Trump will have no role with the company. Trump and his aides say they are establishing a clear dividing line between his presidency and the business. And note that conflict of interest laws that govern most executive branch employees do not apply to the president or the vice president. I could actually run my business and run government at the same time, Trump said. Wednesday during a news conference. I don't like the way that looks. But I would be able to do that if I wanted to. Trump said he recently rejected two billion dollars worth of business deals in Dubai. I turned it down, he said. I didn't have to turn it down. Send your sons over there.
and your son's over there. Oh dear. Well, he, uh, I, I was listening to an old clip when uh, Howard Stern was on. I mean, uh, Howard Stern. I mean, uh, Donald Trump was on the Howard Stern show, uh -huh. and uh, his friend kind of like blew the whistle. Uh, he, 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 because uh, Donald Trump supposedly stole his girlfriend away from him, cool. and uh, somebody Donald Trump personally knows by the name of AJ, from New, I guess from New York City, and uh, AJ kind of like slipped up and said something about Donald's uh, uh, sexual escapades, said something about Russians, Russians, mm. you know, so it was like a slip up, uh, hey, he, he was, uh, I don't know if you want to call a ladies man, playboy, or a womanizer, ah, playboy. serial womanizer, playboy, whatever, whatever term you want to give it, player, yeah, you know. Uh, well, yeah. that's how it is when you're when you're extremely rich. You know, all the gold diggers. They, uh, you know, Donald kept on saying she, she never loved you, AJ. She loved me, me. I, and she, you know, <laughs> she loved. She called me all the time. Of course. <laughs> well, well, did AJ have any money? Multi-billionaire. Well, not. I. They probably. If he's if he's buddy if he's buddies with Trump, he probably has quite a bit of money. But I don't yeah. think he has the uh, he don't have the, he doesn't have the fame and fortune of a Donald Trump. Uh, well, maybe not. Yeah. You know, women uh, women have an obsession with uh, monetary uh, gain or monetary possession. You like the feather the nest. Feather the nest. It's more like uh, there's a bit of prostitution, prostitute ah. in every woman, huh? Ah. Don't sigh. I know. I know you're a little. You're a little, ah. little. You're a little politically correct. You don't want to say anything negative about any group, but it's true. They, they are very monetarily uh, aware. Let's put it that way. Uh, all right. Continue. Regarding Donald Trump goes to Washington. I do not think I have seen a newspaper article that was such an insult to its readers. Apparently, people who voted for Donald Trump were racists and more. It almost was saying that Trump voters are criminals. That is the mentality of a five-year-old who relies on name-calling instead of intellectual capacity. Could it be that voters were tired of the blame game? Every problem in the last eight years was someone else's fault. From Reagan to Bush to the Republicans in general and now the grand finale Vladimir Putin. You mean scapegoating? Have the Democrats not learned anything yet? Now U.S. Senators Cory Booker and Bob Menendez, New Jersey Democrats... Yeah, him too. I'm, I'm Shame on him. ...are endorsing Phil Murphy for governor. Well, Bob Menendez, I think, originally from Union City, uh, New Jersey, Hudson County. I suppose it is because he's spending ten million dollars of his own money on the campaign and because he has the potential to raise big bucks from his friends at Goldman Sachs and Wall Street. Why not look at Assemblyman John Wisniewski who has a progressive agenda including single-payer health care. Wisniewski is the one looking to the future. The old politics that Murphy promises caused the Democrats to lose many elections in November. If the party wants to attract young and old voters, it must stop 
doing the same things that God had beat. Yeah, that's for sure. Good. You know what? I got I got a bug in my head. I am gonna go stock up on those LED bulbs. Oh, oh. Uh, all right, uh, we have time for one more before bre break. Plenty of time. Oh, okay, go ahead. The Supreme Court turned away former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura's bid for reinstatement of a $1.8 million verdict in his defamation case against the estate of Navy Seal and American Sniper author Chris Kyle. I remember that case. The justices did not comment on Monday in leaving intact a decision by the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals to upend the verdict. Ventura, a former SEAL himself, took issue with Kyle's claim that Kyle punched Ventura at a California bar in 2006 for offensive comments about the SEALs. There are eyewitnesses that testify? I don't know. I don't know what to say. No. There are, I know one thing's for sure. There are very naive young men that believe the, the bullshit that are told them about the joining the military. Good. And about why they're they're being shipped to the Middle East or, or Afghanistan. They believe the lies, they believe the propaganda uh, about why they're there. And um, the last war the United States ever won was World War II. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that was the last war where the United States borders were threatened as well as our freedoms. After that, all wars for profit. To, to, to sum it up in a short sentence. The upcoming inauguration of Donald Trump is making me worry. Are we going to have a president or an entertainer? Seems the only thing he is concerned about is mocking people on Twitter or having his name in the headlines. Honestly, if he wasn't on Twitter having tirades and uh, taking tantrums, I, I wouldn't be as entertained as I've been. I find him to be very entertaining. But not what, not, not what the cabinet picks, no way. That's a nightmare. Now, that he has won the election, he's backtracking on most of the issues he promised to do. <laughs> what were we talking about before? He said he would be tough with our adversaries, but wants to be friends with Russia. Well, they're not... They're not the adversary you think they are. For those that think they are, they are, they are our enemies and that they're bad. And this is after Russia took over the Crimea and hacked our election. Oh, yeah, right, they did that. Okay, okay. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. So I don't consider Trump my president. Recent letters to the editor say we should give him a chance and all work together. But why should I? Did the GOP give Barack Obama a chance? Nope. No. 
they obstructed everything he did or wanted to do. Well, Republicans are hypocrites. They always were. And questioned his patriotism. They, you name it, they attacked Barack Obama. Anything imaginable. Just like they made a big stink about uh, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. They, they, they're all one-sided. They, it's like, it's like with the evangelical uh, 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 religious nuts. They're, they're, they only see what insanity is going through their head. You know, they, they only have their agenda. They're not, they're not going to compromise with anybody else. If the GOP worked together with Obama on an infrastructure bill, the country would be seeing many more jobs and a healthier economy. Their only concern was not the good of the country, but to make sure Obama failed. On Inauguration Day, I will take down my flag except for Memorial and Veterans Days and not put it up again until he leaves office. My goal as U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell, Republican of Kentucky, said of Obama is to make Trump a one-term president. Alright. Now don't forget people, Barack Obama is also a corporatist a Democrat, like Cory Booker, okay, the black man in the White House. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not talking about liberal, progressive Democrats, okay? Both parties are bad. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna break soon, right? One more, all right, go ahead. About 15 minutes. Oh, we got time. Oh, I just wanna say that I wanna give a shout out my friend and uh, our official craft beer reviewer and enthusiast, Mr. Dave Coulter from our group Everything is Food and I will be doing my first live uh, talk show with Mr. Dave Coulter on craft beer tomorrow afternoon and it will be live via live stream. So shout out to Dave Cole. Alright, go ahead. We all know by now who Donald Trump is. He wasn't an ideal choice for me, but was only one worth a vote. But was the only one worth a vote. Despite his character flaws, the way he's constantly criticized, depicted, and analyzed is a result of his unpolitical makeup. The more he gets trashed, the more he bellows back in an unconventional manner. And this cycle will not stop. We are not used to it. Well, he's going to be our leader. Yeah, but you're dealing with a massive ego. I know, pe I know people like that. I know, I know one person in particular that like that. It, 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 there's just, there's just no compromising. It's just, you know, his way or the highway, and he he knows everything, and he does everything he does is better. Everything, even his razor blades are sharper than ah. yours. And superior to yours. Everything, everything about him is superior to everyone else. And and if you challenge him, he just goes on and on and on, and doesn't really the de the de debate you with any logic. Uh, that is an insecure person. Sound familiar? Does the person who does not debate with any proof or logic? Yeah, that's an insecure person. Right. And believes that he can get his policies and agendas and thoughts and etc. over to the other person yeah. by either force, 
screaming louder well, than uh, the other person. He, shout, he shouts, he tries shout to shout you down. down. Yeah. Shout Arm. you down, uh, um, blow horn, you know, uh, prevent you from getting your point across. And if you did, does not listen to your point. Uh, they, everything he does is better. Everything he has is superior. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I'm talking about William H. Morrow the third. William Hamilton Morrow the oh. third. He's like that. Unbelievably fantastic sounding voice. But on a personal level, that's him. None of us know how it will turn out. Very narcissistic and self-centered. All right, go ahead. If Trump becomes a politician by promising the world and then not delivering, he'll be as bad as numerous past leaders have been. But I trust his team. I am willing to wait it out. Hope for their best. It's time everyone gets back to their own business. I think we have time for this one. Okay, go ahead. Question. This question is being asked of Dr. Mehmet Oz Mehmet, Mehmet and Michael Roizen. Yeah, now Mehmet Oz, don't forget, is an orthodox, comes from orthodox medicine, he's a surgeon. I think he might be a cardiovascular surgeon. He is, that, and the question is... That Oprah Winfrey took a liking to? Yes. My grandfather. 78. Always was a positive guy. But he's been pretty down in the dumps lately. Maybe he doesn't feel well. He's been on dialysis. Oh. And the kidney transplant list. Oh, jeez. For a couple of years now. His blood pressure is high. Hmm. Then low after treatments. He has trouble sleeping. He doesn't move around much. He used to be a basketball player. What can I do to help him out? Answer. When it comes to helping dialysis patients, a couple of things are prim of primary importance. First, make sure he's sticking to his diet. Usually, but check his doctor. He should be avoiding salt, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium rich foods. And eating lots of protein. Too much protein is a strain on the kidneys. But that's how it used to be in the old days. But what is he recommending now? But now they are recommending eating lots of protein. Okay, but refraining from the other things. Well, I mean, lo other, lowering. Yeah, because they're going to back up. You know? And make sure he's getting plenty of fluids. Now, I know somebody who's on dialysis right now. And they hold her fluids in check. They only allow a certain amount. So I don't know. These are changes from what used to be. Yeah, because I, I have a friend who's uh, on dialysis, and uh, that article would be beneficial. Well, you may have it after this show. Okay. Okay. Well, if you want to jot down anything for your other friend, you can. No, I've already given, uh, he, she already has a copy. Mm -hmm. He can get fluids not just from water, but from fruits that his doctor recommends. 
it'll probably be apples and berries because they have less potassium than oranges and bananas. Yeah, figs are loaded with potassium. Dates, <laughs> figs. Um, um, magnesium, you know, it's, it's strange. I mean, these are important minerals, magnesium. Um, potassium is very easy to get. Magnesium is, is more difficult to get enough of. But uh, they, they have to keep their magnesium down, too. Yeah, and uh, sodium, magnesium and a B6 are good for preventing kidney stones. Yeah. Oh, speaking of kidney stones, there's been a lot of articles about sodium bicarbonate being very beneficial for kidney afflictions uh, involving stones. All right. But it's sodium bicarbonate. That That's what puzzles me. Sodium bicarbonate. Well, bicarbonate, you know, is a, um, is a, um... The body reacts to it differently than just no, sodium it, chloride? it, it, um, Alkalizes the body? Much, yeah, well, not alkalizes per se, but lowers the acidic levels. Because, um, when I, blood. when I used to have, uh, aquariums, tropical fish, the, uh, when you test the pH of the water... Uh the uh they would give you a bottle of something if if the water was too alkaline and then they would give you a bottle they would give you sodium bicarbonate if, if the acid. water was too acid yes yes so yes. as far as aquariums go the alkalizing remedy was for as, as acidic <laughs> water was sodium bicarbonate yeah you know so maybe the body reacts differently uh, to sodium bicarbonate if a person has a kidney problems. Anyway, I'll finish. Second, up. ask his doctor about exercise. We know that may sound con counterintuitive for someone with kidney failure, but a recent multi center study published in the journal of the American Society of Nephrology found that for people on dialysis, a simple, personalized, home-based exercise program significantly improved their cognitive functioning, raised their levels of social interaction, and improved their kidney disease. Yeah. The six-month program consisted of a six-minute walking program three consecutive two-minute intervals each day, and a sit-to-stand exercise repeated five times a day. Although the study had dialysis staff members supervising the exercises, with his doctor's input, you could help your grandfather do them and help him track his improvement over six months of training. Since he was a basketball player, you may be able to light some competitive fires. And when you can't be there in person daily, call him, asking him to read his pedometer. That's it. Well, a sit, sit to stand exercise can be done holding uh, resistance. It could be a sack of potatoes. It Look. could be a, a, a sack of rice. It could be uh, a pair of dumbbells. It could be uh, your grandchild in your arms or something. It could be anything. And you just keep on. They're, they're like, it's like doing squats. Sit to stand. Sit you know, I'm stand. sitting and then you stand and you sit and you stand. That's actually, that is uh, a very easy to explain exercise for people that don't exercise. Now, my mother says to me, how come you have so much more energy than I have? I have no energy. I says, Ma, uh -huh. I exercise six days a week. Ooh. You're sedentary. This is why you don't have it. You'd be surprised how much... Uh, Vitality exercise gives you. Activity. 
use it or lose it. All right, we're going to cut for break for lunch. Um, and uh, like I said before, you'll be joined by the Sensible Sage Sash Boyle and Promo. And uh, hit the pause button and read if you must. We'll catch you later. Hey. Okay, welcome to another edition of uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Coming at you for this week, ending in 114.17. I'm Sash Boyle, and let's get to it. Golden showers. Uh, Trump decided that uh, he's going to rail against uh, media and um, support fake news. And fake news comes at him and the report of him being bought out and beholden and um, I think being blackmailed by the Russian government who has videos of him peeing, getting peed on by hookers or paying hookers that are Russian, I don't know. Uh, anyway, instant karma coming at you, Trump. Uh, the right wing is trying to get rid of and gut ethics committees, uh, setting the stage to legitimize corruption, uh, giving the robber barons of 100 years ago a run for their money. CIA versus WikiLeaks, who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust the organization that led us into uh, Vietnam and Iraq, or are you going to trust the guy that exposed the corruption in our political process this year? Uh, Right-wingers can't overthrow Obamacare because of the filibuster of the Democrats in the Senate, so they decided they're going to go ahead and gut it, uh, basically rendering it ineffectual, um, committing genocide against the American people, and screwing over their own Republican governors who are going to have to answer why they can't cover their own people anymore. Um, so, uh, hadn't thought it through, did, did, did you, right wing? But they, they're not known for thinking things through. Um, U.S. and NATO are, uh, ramping up on the borders of Russia. Kind of coincides with the whole Russian hacking thing. Um, something to think about. Is that what we want? Do we want World War III? Because of certain segments in our government that want it for some ridiculous reason? Um, Andrew Cuomo screws over the poor and uses a cover story of, uh, helping out students. Um, but we see through it, Andrew. Stop taking away, you know, legitimate coverage for the poor. Um, the right wing revealed to be idiots in the Senate confirmation hearings. Um, as we suspected, they don't really care about the law. They don't care about consumers. They don't care about, um, you know, hiding, you know, Exxon hiding information on climate change. They don't care. They don't care. Um, 13 Democrats screwed over their constituencies by voting for, um, not voting for, lower prices for pharmaceuticals. Cory Booker being the biggest uh, neoliberal in progressive clothing. And uh, lastly but not leastly, uh, Comey, the FBI director, did hold information which would have uh, removed Hillary so Bernie could have gotten the nomination. We, we would probably be living in a progressive world, not a right-wing fascist world here in the United States. Anyway, that's the top 10 uh, news things for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you like it, let's keep doing this. Uncensored Hard Titten Truth, coming at you. Sash Boyle from California. Peace. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. 
Newsletters censor pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of censored, Newsletter censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like newsletter censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much, Sensational Sage, Sash Boyle. And uh, I'm assuming you saw that list of Democratic senators that voted against We the People, mm. against the little guy. Bernie Sanders is furious with them. Well, at least it's a wake up call about him trying to save the Democratic Party. Seven lucky bells for the a balance of this show. For decades, there have been strong individuals who have talked about the problems in the Washington political swamp. However, with no good leadership, the talk amounted to nothing. Many people doubt that Donald Trump will accomplish any real changes in this swamp. Well, the election amounted to the same nothing. These doubters should remember a quote from Alexander the Great, who conquered most of the known world about 2,300 years ago. I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. I am afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. He, he's um, 
He's overrating uh, the general. My message to Donald Trump. Go get him. Well, there are a lot of um, tea baggers out there that many of them don't have a pot to piss in. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't have a pot to piss in that still believe all that right-wing malarkey about how to stimulate the economy, about the big lie called trickle-down economics, and uh, about demonizing big government because privatizing everything has proven not to work. Well, it doesn't work for us. No, it works. certainly works for the company that you. Yeah. You, in other words, if you if they uh, privatize Social Security, it certainly works for the company who gets that. To uh, uh, administer it, right. doesn't it? Yeah. It's like when Paul Walker Winsky said uh, he was glorifying uh, and and bragging about how great the Industrial Revolution was. But he's a businessman. He owns like three restaurants in Perth, Australia. So if you're if you're coming from financial being financially independent, then you're going to say you're going to like how you got there. Oh, the industrial revolution <coughs> was a very positive thing for everyone. No, it wasn't. If you have money and you're a business owner, uh yeah, not a mom and pop business owner, but you know, uh, big business, big business. Last October, <clears throat> Julian Assange of WikiLeaks said he was going to release damaging emails of Hillary Clinton yeah. because she wanted to drone him. Oh, they want to drone everybody who disagrees. <laughs> The emails were released, and he is now saying that neither Russia nor Vladimir Putin had anything to do with it. But our CIA says, without releasing proof, Russia was responsible for those emails. The CIA does not have to cite proof because our media and a majority of Americans believe them, even without proof. President-elect Donald Trump is finding out that if Americans don't automatically believe our government, they are called conspiracy theorists. Right, and, 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 and therefore nuts. Or worse. So he now is having second thoughts. But accepting governmental opinions without facts has bad consequences. <sighs> President George W. Bush told us in 2002 that Saddam Hussein is a homicidal dictator who is addicted to weapons of mass destruction. Well, he did use nerve, ga nerve gas against the Kurdish rebels, against the Kurdish civilians, too. And who sold them the gas? I think the U.S. did. Thank you. But he, you know, as far as weapons of mass destruction that would be a world threat, they, didn't, they never found it. As, uh, what was her name, the uh, Secretary of State? The black woman under him. Oh, Condoleezza, Condoleezza Rice? Condoleezza, yeah. She didn't want it to be a mushroom cloud. A mushroom cloud. Yeah. Well, you know, Julian Assange did prove. Hold on. Julian Assange did prove that the DNC, in fact, rigged the primaries against Bernie Sanders. He did come out with evidence about that. And uh, WikiLeaks never had to retract anything 
and it publicly stated. But Hussein did not have such weapons. And yet Bush was still able to get us to attack Iraq in 2003. Well, you know, you know you had, Dick Cheney was the real uh, boss in that administration. They had their own intelligence set up. Okay? Yeah. That attack had dire consequences for America. <clears throat> costing us two trillion dollars, the deaths of almost five thousand. Oh, but Halliburton made made out like a bandit. The destabilization of the Middle East, yeah, and the eventual creation of the ISIS terrorist group. Uh, the creation of ISIS. You're right. Uh, you know, I was reading some articles where. Omar Gaddafi, aside from the, uh, the positive uh, aspects of what he provided his own people, yes, yes. he wanted to start a new African gold-backed currency because, I mean, look, South Africa is just loaded with gold. So he wanted to start a gold-backed currency in Africa and uh, the... Uh, the oligarch, the world oligarch, did not like that at all. They did not like that. Just when you thought Donald Trump had already stuck his proverbial Twitter tongue as far out as possibly that he could, he goes even further, claims that he has information not privy to our intelligence community concerning Russian hacking. I tell you, Alec Baldwin has so much damn comedy material for the next four years, he's probably happier than a pig and shit. Saturday Night Live, Trump impersonations. This statement is disturbing. Trump comes across as an unwitting conduit for Russian intelligence as he refuses to confront Russian leader Vladimir Putin on a matter of crucial importance. Even his most ardent supporters should find his behavior disturbing. His embrace of everything Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu does is also suspect. The Netanyahu, yes. When will Trump embrace American interests around the globe? The expansion of Israeli settlements into the occupied territories is one of the greatest impediments to peace in the Middle East. It will be interesting to see Trump try to navigate a conflict between Israel and Russia, perhaps over Iran's nuclear program. Which side will he support? Which side will he support? Little I don't know. Howard Cosell. I don't know. Oh boy, I tell you, Jeff, definitely check out our new Google community, Progressive Discussions. It's very unique, it looks great. It has a realistic uh, Yule log fireplace burning, eternally burning. Cool. The fireside chat. Eternally burning. We bring back the fireside chat here at Progressive Discussions. Gives it a very warm and cozy look. Don't try to uh, roast any any smoked sausage on it or marshmallows because it won't it won't cook. Right. It is a cyber Yule log. Anyway, 
What do you got there? I forgot my 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 tartan, my beautiful tartan uh, scarf. I'm gonna have to wear it before I get here, so I don't forget. Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey is attacking the free press. Oh uh, yeah, he says he's a chubby version of Donald Trump. He's promoting a bill to allow municipalities to avoid requiring the publication of public notices thus cutting off a vital revenue stream for newspapers. It is his way of retribution for the excellent investigative reporting by the record that exposed his corrupt administration and his total failure as governor. You see, the free press is an enemy to the right wing. They don't want it. That's the reason why they don't want it. Uh, but now, the, you know, the the uh, the key words, the uh, catchphrase is fake news. So if you hit a raw nerve with the truth and they don't like it, it's fake news. Where are you from? CNN? I don't want to talk to you. Fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news. That's what he did the other day. With black, black, black. Fake news. With a costume, yeah. You're fake. Fake network. Somebody else will, will do the same thing. What? MSNBC? I don't, no, oh, I don't want to talk to you. Fake news, fake news. Although right. he is already ri rivaled by many New Jersey residents, excuse me, reviled. Not rivaled. Reviled. reviled. It's a yeah. negative word. Reviled. It is time the record took the gloves off. Use bold headlines to list Christie's actions and the inactions that have had such devastating consequences on the state and its citizens. Well, did they take the gloves off yet? No. Or they're pussies? They're yeah. pussies, just like that 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 pussy ass spineless News 12 New Jersey. Always smiling from ear to ear when they talk about Republicans uh, and and Chris Christie. Never a discouraging word from them. They're 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 uh, pusillanimous pipsqueaks and uh, I guess uh, sycophants. Sycophant. I hate the sycophant. That's a brown noser. Yeah. Uh, Sickening sycophants. Speaking of Christie, not su suffering succotash. The idea that anyone would subscribe to anything to help Governor Christie is ludicrous. Ludicrous. The state of New Jersey has lost so much money, paying for him to run around the country in the interest of getting himself another job. Add to that the cost of Bridgegate. Most people probably feel that any profits from a book he writes should revert to the state treasury. Why should he be allowed to profit from a book deal based on what he did for us? Enough is enough. Why use taxpayers' money for your uh, legal fees uh, concerning Bridgegate? <laughs> yeah, because they can. You, you know politicians in America are never held accountable, really accountable for anything. Hey, you didn't see not one uh, Wall Street person uh, go inside of a prison cell, have you? No. no. You know, or politician. No. Americans don't hold anybody accountable. They're not like Europeans who revolt for real. Justice is never served if you're if you're uh, politically affluent, powerful, uh, wealthy. No. Uh, with with control of Congress and the White House. 
Republicans now have the power to overturn Obamacare. But they have yet to describe what they will replace it with. Death. <laughs> Since 2010, the GOP majority in the House has voted more than 60 times to overturn Obamacare. But we have no clue what to expect. I saw a very funny political satire cartoon of Donald Trump visiting someone in a hospital and, and, and the person that's in a hospital bed is worried about their uh, losing their Affordable Care Act coverage. So Obama said, I mean, uh, Donald Trump says to the patient, don't worry, you will be covered. And then it shows the grave. It shows, yeah. uh, it shows Donald Trump covering you know, the casket with soil, with the shovel. Oh, you'll be covered. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Ryan, Paul Ryan, was having a little town meeting the other day and speaking to this guy in the audience, and the guy in the audience is alive today because of Obamacare. I'm, I'm sure many are. And uh, uh, Paul Ryan absolutely lied on the stage that uh, he will be taken care of and we will replace it with something better. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, your funeral costs. We'll cover you. <laughs> now You'll be the covered. Republicans are saying they will not announce changes for about two years. Because there is no change. If, exactly. they, if they don't have changes to announce in two years, yeah. they don't have anything. They just They just said they have to repeal it as a priority as soon as they get in power because they have an obsession with shrinking the government down to nothing and privatizing everything. And making Obama look insignificant during his age. Well, I, th I think that was just a racial thing. You know? Honestly, I, I gotta be honest, you know, but... No. But, but, you know, I, I mean, nowadays, the way Democrats really are, I don't care. Let them all slug it out. If Republicans had something positive to present as an Obama alternative, they would surely present it on day one. Midterm elections are in two years. If their replacement favors insurance companies over the public good, they will stall announcing their plan to protect their seats. Meanwhile, insurers and hospitals and the public will be in turmoil. Well, uh, see that the whole thing with capitalism, whether it be crony capitalism or not, is uh, their objective is, is profit. I mean, uh, it, 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 it's a business. Healthcare under capitalism is a business. And then uh, that means that uh, the patients will suffer and um, with insurance companies, with that way of uh, running, running their, their companies, uh, that way of thinking, the, the, the insured will suffer and uh, that's just how it is. It's not, you know, it's just the safety and well-being uh, of, of the people who give the, the pay for merchandise or services or, or, or premiums, it's not their priority. These people are not their priority. No. So it's, it's always profit over people on the planet. And uh, it's always uh, the, the system since the Industrial Revolution has always been rigged for the rich, you know, and, uh, and that's the truth. You know, unless you are rich yourself and uh, you're a sociopath and you feel no remorse for the have-nots and you don't care about the have-nots, then uh, capitalism and the Industrial Revolution are just Peachy Keen. <clears throat> they're wonderful. Depends who you're talking to. 
Now, does that mean that there are no rich people uh, that uh, have a conscience and care? No, I'm not saying that. Uh, <clears throat> um, there are not many. I got news for you. There's always an agenda. When somebody comes out and says, I am a philanthropist. I, I give to many worthy causes. Yes, it's a tax write-off. Bill Morrow gets upset when I mention that. Uh, he says I'm being negative. Mm -hmm. look, look at the look at look at the point that they're giving that, that where they don't have to give. They don't have to give. I says you know what by rights, they they they're not obligated to give to a charity, but they are uh, they they are supposed to be obligated to pay their fair share in taxes, which they're not doing. Mm -hmm. They may not be obligated to share the uh, prosperity of the company with the employees, like the asshole, uh, what the hell is his name, Shatner, uh, 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 I mean, the not, I don't know how to pronounce his name, the douchebag that's the CEO of Papa John Pizza says he's not mm -hmm. obligated to trickle anything down, which debunks right there, trickle down, so he's not obligated to 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 give anything to his employees they're not obligated to give the charity but th but they the ones that do give are doing it for tax reasons uh, and the customers are not obligated to buy his products there you Bingo. go it's called boycotting which which okay. unfortunately Americans don't do but they could buy a little Caesar they could buy Domino they could buy any number of small pizza joints in every town in yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you could say that to any CEO. You could say that to the Walton family of Walmart. You could say, you ever hear the word boycott? You want to be smart ass? Guess what? There's a big, uh, um, <clears throat> there's a big plan. I mean, there's a big. Uh, 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 there, there is a movement. I can't think of a better word. There is a movement out there for we, the people, to simply boycott. So we're not ob uh, we're not obligated to spend money in your stores. Yeah. So if you want to be a wise ass about it, hey. Change of pace. Tomato paste. My husband of five years has confessed to affairs that resulted in two children. Oh, so he had affairs, but he did not use contraception. He let the scum guppies fly. Fly like an eagle. To the sea, fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. Time keeps on slipping, the the sperm keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping uh, up her vagina. Doo -doo -doo. I suspected something was up when after a year of marriage, he seemed distant. Despite our almost 15 year age difference, I never in a million years thought he would do something like this. Yes, yeah, sure. A few months ago? No red flags? He started disappearing again. Oh, again? At first it was a day here and a day there. Then it became weeks. It's like when Ralph Cramden used to have late night poker games at the lodge. You know, you could, you could use any excuse. Oh, I'm working late at the office. Yeah, right. I finally confronted him. He confessed about the affairs. Oh. He claims the mother of the newborn is a prostitute. Oh, jeez. And that it was a mistake. The prostitute had the baby? Doesn't that kind of destroy the, the career of the prostitute? He wants to be involved in the three-year-old little girl's life. Oh, boy. But not the newborn. At that point, I told him... Get a paternity test. He needed to leave and remove his belongings from the house. 
She's a hooker, man. Get a paternity test. Yeah, the wife doesn't want to catch any uh, STDs. My friends say that legally, I can't put him out of a house he owned before we were married. Yikes. However, he did not... Excuse me, however, he... Wait. ...did buy a home during our marriage. I accidentally found that out. It's where the three-year-old lives. You better find out if that's really his kid. I feel I am entitled to something. I asked him to have the older child's mother move, but he refused. What a stupid ass. He has unprotected sex with a prostitute, and he's a married man, and he brings, and he goes home to his wife after unprotected sex protected sex with a prostitute. Uh, Where does that leave me? Uh, with nothing. I don't know what to do. I don't have money for a lawyer. And have nowhere to go. Please advise, dear A.B. Well, the, the, the case is in her favor. I know that's for sure. Your friends mean well. But you need a more informed source of information than they can offer. Because divorce laws vary from state to state, go online to womenslaw.org. Search for divorce in Pennsylvania. You will find basic information about divorce laws in your state, which I think you will find interesting. Yeah, and everything's no fault. That sucks. If somebody is guilty of something and they do something bad, they should pay the consequences. Restitution. No fault. My ass. Restitution! Restitution! Restitution. I like that word. It's like the word indigenous. I like saying it. I want restitution. I want restitution. Yeah, no fault car insurance. No fault marriage. What is this no fault? How would people ever learn their lesson if there's no restitution? You tell me, eh? Eh? I'm eh? A you see this shillelagh? It's, I'm a woman. It's Blackthorn. Oh, I'm sorry. I got carried away. Twice married. My first marriage was to a woman Mancha, Mancha. who hurt me deeply by lying and cheating. Oh, Mancha, Mancha? Oh, she mean a lesbian uh, marriage? I am all, I am now married to a man. Oh, she convoided. Who even with his faults is a wonderful husband. Maybe she can have the first uh, mixed marriage. Maybe she can have both of them. My thing is, I am still strongly attracted to women. Hey, invite them all and live in the same place. I consider myself to be bisexual. There you go. Get a king-size bed. Get a nice zebra blanket or a throw, you know, or a leopard skin with a disco ball in the middle of the ceiling. Get all the, 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 the chicks and your husband there. Have a ball. When my husband notices that I look at women, I'm honest and I tell him what I admire. He wants a threesome? About a particular woman. What I leave out is that I'm turned on by them. Maja, Maja. He is not open to my activity. Actively, excuse me, being bisexual. Uh, he Not married. even a threesome. He married her. Nobody twisted his arm to marry her. Is it all right for me to fantasize? Oh, so he he doesn't want to participate in uh, even if the other woman takes care of him too. He don't. Want, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want a, one of those. Uh, uh, unconventional alternative open marriages. He's a traditionalist. Traditional love, romance. 
Is it alright for me to fantasize when I'm intimate with him that he's a woman? What? Wait, hold on. He's transgender? He's a woman? She's fantasizing when he's ma she's making love with him he's a woman. that he's a woman. Why doesn't he dress in drag? Why doesn't he put a wig because on? Because he doesn't want to participate. In her fantasy. In her fantasies. Yeah, then she can have the best of both worlds if you, if you know, he gets a close shave and puts lipstick on, eye makeup, and a wig. Wears panties. I know some people fantasize about being with a celebrity or a more attractive mate, but is it all right to fantasize about someone of a different gender? You know. So I knew this girl back in the day from uh, the golden age of disco. She was very pretty, tall, like a model. But you know what? As soon as she opened her mouth, she sounded like Pam Dre uh, Drescher. <coughs> oh my God. So, you know, it's not all 100% in the looks. You know what I mean? You got, when they open their mouth, you can't get along with them, or there's no compatibility at all. You know. All right, finish up. Here's Ab's answer. Ab, your bisexuality is part of who you are. Oh, yeah. You should make clear to your husband that there is nothing wrong with being bisexual, and people who are can be and are monogamous. But did he know about her bisexuality when he married her? A commitment is a commitment. And you are sticking to yours. Sexual fantasies are normal. Come on, Jim. And you are right that many people besides yourself fantasize about others of both sexes. Ugh. during sex because you don't act on your fantasies relax and enjoy them and stop flogging yourself well old man Len uh, the late great Leonard Nimoy Mr. Spock says the desire for something or you could say the fantasy is much more pleasurable and more powerful than actually having <clears throat> that which you fantasize about, that that which you desire. The, like the pursuit is greater than the possession yeah. of of the the reality of the desire. Yeah. You know, I'm not quoting him word for word, but that's what he said. And fantasies are more exciting than the reality because it happened to me. And I will testify to that fact. You know, once once it's a uh, been there, done that, you know, and it becomes old hat. The fantasy is like, eh, it's not. It, it loses its effervescence. You know, the wind dies down uh, in the sailboat of life. You know, the wind dies down. The, uh, the bubbles in the craft beer die out. It's not what it once was. All right, all right. How we doing on time? We do one more. On. One more, and that's it. All right, let's go. After reading day after day reports about how the electoral college should honor and respect the popular vote, yeah, right. By columnists and letter writers to the record. I began to wonder if our citizens realize that we are a republic for very, very strong reasons. To counter the arguments cornering the voting obligations of our state electors, winner take all is not mandated by the Constitution. And that the founders surely wanted the popular vote to be the deciding factor in our presidential elections. And that Hillary Clinton won 
the national popular vote by more than 2.5 million votes. And that, there is no logical reason to declare Donald Trump the winner. I offer the following logic. According to the latest Cook political report on California, Clinton beat Trump in the popular vote in that state by more than three million votes. Popular vote advocates should take a moment and let that sink in. California alone, one state in 50, can choose our president. The United States of America was designed to be represented by a president who was sensitive to every state in the Union. Yeah. The founders wanted to protect the Union from the tyranny of the majority. Why would any presidential candidate be concerned with the interests of any other state but California if the popular vote were to elect our president? It would be the end of coalition building. Our senators and House representatives would be figureheads in the long run. There would be no reason to have individual states whatsoever. The Founding Fathers were very well aware of the history of pure democracies. They knew that if freedom and liberty of the people were top priority, relying only on the popular vote did not work and never has. If we as a nation want California alone to pick our president, then let's abolish the electoral college. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, last week there was an article where you had like, eh, maybe a paragraph left. I did. I yeah, mem remember so. when the uh, the camera, uh, the uh, our cameraman had a malfunction, and we lost. Uh, well, it disappeared. <laughs> I knew it was. I knew you were going to say that. When you, when any time he tells me, we'll pick up where we left well, off nobody, next week. Nobody put it back in my reading. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, no, no. Went into the garbage stuff up there. No big deal. See, here's my reading. Right, and there's, there's the garbage. The garbage. Yeah. Right. Oh. Uh, I'm the one that threw it out. Aha! See. Um, oh God. Anyway, the inauguration will be coming up be <laughs> between this show and our next show. Heaven help us all. God help us all. Oh gosh! Help me. Oh man. Help me. Help me, Spock. Help me, Kirk. Yeah, with this cabinet, it's a it's a real life nightmare. But you know what? You Americans picked it. Yeah, you you Americans. Well, remember picked one it. other thing too. The a lot of the uh, a lot of the cabinet members aren't going to do, or say they're not going to do, or don't want to do some of the things that Trump promised to do. Yeah, they're totally. They have their own mind. They're totally anti-Trump yeah. campaign promises, and they are anti-Trump victory speech promises. Yeah. They're the opposite of what Donald Trump promised, uh -huh. and they are they are Looney Tunes. So I don't know how they're going to get away with that. Anybody from a Trump man. like Sessions? Jeff, his first name is Jeff. Jeff. Anybody who says the separation of church and state in the Constitution is unconstitutional is out of his mind. Mm -hmm. It's out of his mind. Okay. Have a good, safe, and healthy uh, weekend and week, and we'll see you next time on Progressive Discussions. Yeah.
and as you can see our studio is a humble grassroots revolution show and that's how we want it to be although cold yeah and if uh a lot of chili sauce. For those that have a problem with James getting up off his chair or have a problem with our studio, you can simply go fuck yourselves. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.